In this video, I'm going to tell you some of the secrets to using your wet palette. Years and years ago, somewhere lost back in the sands of time, or right here, Pachow, I did a video about how to make your own wet palette, and uh, it's gotten a lot of views, and a lot of people have told me when I've bumped into them at conventions or, or you know, via messages on YouTube or you know, Facebook or email or whatever, that the, the whole concept of using a wet palette has really upped their game. If you're wondering about wet palette and whether a wet palette is right for you, first talk to your doctor. No, don't actually talk to your doctor. Just go watch that video and uh, figure out how to get one. You know, you can either build one, you can buy them now. There's companies that are making them, and uh, you'll be you'll be amazed. But there's more to the wet palette than just making it, and you know, putting water in it and all that kind of stuff. There are little things, little nuances, questions that I've been asked over the years that uh, kind of dive a little bit deeper into the wet palette, and I thought I'd try to answer some of them here. One misconception that people have about wet palettes is that because they stay wet so long, if you build them right, um, that what that means is that you can keep them sealed and your paints will be perfect and usable and lovely and fresh for weeks and weeks and weeks. So as you decide to not paint anything for, you know, like a month, you'll just be able to come back to your wet palette and, and it'll be fine and ready to go. But that's not actually the case. Um, the trick is, is that with a wet palette, you, it, it keeps the paint wet while you're painting. Okay. Um, if you've been using a dry palette previously, uh, and you've been just taking paint directly out of the container, you know, with a brush or with a stick or with a little whatever, and you've been then putting it onto a dry palette and then adding a little bit of water to it to thin your paints because you're supposed to thin your paints. Unless they're contrast paints, then it's oh, no, all bets are off. But you thin your paints and you go through all that, and you will find that your paints will dry out very quickly on a dry palette. And that's the reason you use the wet palette, because it keeps the paints wet for the entire length of your painting session. But that doesn't mean that you should think that you can use those exact same paints in three weeks, you know, if you, after you come back. You keep it all nice and airtight and, and sealed, and you come back and go, well, everything should be perfectly, like it's a stasis field. That's not the way it works. The fact that we have to shake our paints pretty much every time we want to squirt some out or whatever, or dip into the pot, shows that paints always want to separate. So even on the palette, the paints will want to separate. And so that's what they're going to do if you give them enough time. And by enough time, literally overnight, in most situations I find, I don't have to like completely redo my wet palette every time I sit down to paint if I'm painting multiple days in a row. But I do generally have to kind of ignore the little splotches of paint that uh, I used in the last session. Some paints will not separate as quickly. Um, I find Citadel paints, because of how thick they are, they don't separate as much. But thinner paints, things like Vallejo, um, great paints, don't get me wrong, but they will go back to their kind of separated state very quickly, even on the wet palette. They do the same thing in the bottle. They do the same place. And pretty much most um, dropper bottle type paints are a lot thinner, so they can get out through that little tiny hole in the dropper bottle and actually be fluid. And because of that, you have to shake them. Well, you can't shake your palette. That will go very, very poorly for you. So. Uh, understand that just because those paints are still wet, they're probably separated. And you'll probably see, sometimes you'll see like some white kind of stuff on the top of the paints or some other color that you don't expect. You know, that was green, but now I see yellow on top. That's the colors kind of separating or the material separating. And so understand one of the benefits of having a big palette is you may not have to change it so frequently because you might only use a corner of it this time and then next night you'll use another corner and another, and you kind of go that way until it's all covered up. And then you're probably going to have to clean it out and, and, and start over again. But really, the concept of the wet palette is not to keep your paints wet for days and days or weeks or weeks. It's to keep it wet while you're painting, wet during the session so you don't have to constantly have dried out spots that you have to then add more paint and then water to to thin it and then get another dried out spot. It's designed to keep the paint workable and wet during the session, but it isn't an end all that will keep the paints fresh and perfect for a long time. Speaking of keeping your wet palette uh, for a long time in between changes, swapping out the whatever, uh, 
a lot of people that I find online talk about mold and how to get rid of it. Now, personally, I've never had mold in my wet palette. And there are times where it'll be weeks in between my last paint and it'll be still wet and everything in there. Again, the paints aren't usable anymore in those spots, but in the other spots, it's fine. But I've never come across mold. It might smell a little weird, um, but it's not like terrible. I've, I've seen people online talk about, it. I opened it and it was, there was mold. You could see it. It's in the sponge thing on the bottom or whatever. Um, and so, you know, in those situations, there are a lot of uh, home remedies that, 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 that come across that you find online uh, to, to, to fix that problem. Some people will tell you to use pennies because the copper in the pennies, and you want to use old pennies like previous 1984, you know, and, and earlier because they had more copper in them than the current pennies, which have a lot more zinc. Uh, but that copper is supposed to chemically work to help keep the mold particulates or whatever from sprouting inside of your wet palette. Um, some people talk about using copper wire and taking some copper wire and putting it underneath the sponge so that that's, you know, that again, it's that same sort of copper thing. People talk about copper sheets. It's lots of copper talk. Um, I've also seen people talking about putting a little bit of dish, just a dab of dish soap in there, and that'll help with the, um, the whole mold problem. Now, if you have an issue where you completely, you know, set up a, a wet palette and then the next day it is caked in mold, you may want to move. I think that there's like maybe uh, you're on some sort of spore mine. I don't know. Uh, but if you are getting some mold over time, then what that mold is telling you to do, just like the mold in the bread bag is telling me to do, is to, uh, well, the br mold in the bread bag is telling me to throw out the, the bread and the bag. Don't throw out your wet palette, but definitely get the stuff that's in there out of there and clean it a little bit more frequently. If it sits for too long and you're getting mold in there, then the trick is to not let it sit for so long. You can try the zinc and, or no, sorry, the zinc, the copper and the, uh, maybe the soap, things like that. If you've got any other ideas, put them in the comments down below. Um, but the easiest way to combat mold is to understand that the wet palette is kind of something you use for a while and then clean out pretty frequently. It's not something that you set up once a quarter. The wet palette is an amazing thing and it has made personally my painting uh, tons better. I mean, it's really an amazing uh, thing for making it easier to blend colors, to mix colors, to just have thinner paints without having them constantly dry out on the palette. That all being said, um, it's not the end all be all for all types of paint situations. I never put dry brush paint, meaning paint that I'm going to use to dry brush, I never put it on a wet palette. I always put it on a dry palette, basically a scrap of plastic that I find in the basement. The reason for that is, is because I want dry brush paint to be drier. And when just like when you put the paint onto the palette, just the palette's wetness itself immediately seeps into the paint to some degree and it thins it a bit. So I don't want that with my dry brush paints. I want the dry brush paint, the paint that I'm using for dry brushing to be a little tacky. So I don't ever put it into my wet palette. I also, I don't think I ever put washes into my wet palette. There are times if you need to thin a wash down, like, and I'm not talking about a glaze, I'm talking about an actual wash, like a, like a games workshop style, you know, shade. I never put those onto a wet palette because for those, I generally want them to be the strength that they are out of the pot. If there's for some reason I'm trying to make like a really fine blend, and again, sort of almost heading into glazing territory a little bit, then sometimes, and I can think of literally a handful of times that I've put uh, drops of wash onto the palette, but understand it's, it's really short term. It's not something you can do for a long time. So normal, regular base coating and blending. Blending, it's spectacular for a wet palette. Uh, it's almost a necessity, but with dry brushing and washes, keep those either in the pot if you're doing washes, or if you have a wash that's in a dropper bottle, put it into something else, something that's dry, like a little tiny cup. I've seen people put them into um, the tops off of their water bottles. They save the tops off of water bottles, and then they just use those as little tiny you know, tubs to put wash in and things like that, so they can knock it out of the dropper bottles. Uh, but for dry brushing, find a scrap piece of basically anything non-porous and go to town from there. Kind of going back to the last point about how when you put paint onto the palette, the palette, a oh, good wet palette, will already start to kind of thin the paint. Understand your paint thickness. When you put it on the wet palette, some paints 
may not need water even added to them once you put them on the wet palette. A lot of Games Workshop Citadel paints will because they have a tendency to be thicker. I'm not saying they're pasty, but they, in some situations they can be thicker. And it also depends on how long you've had them. They have a tendency to get thicker over time. Thinner paints though, like stuff from um, Army Painter, uh, stuff from Vallejo, things like that, they will be usually in some situations quite thin right out of the bottle. So adding even more water to them for some situations may not be a necessity. Almost always, we're, we're always telling you thin your paints, but really look and see how it's coming out of the bottle when you do it. And you might not need to because just sitting on the actual kind of wet parchment paper surface, that will leach up into the paint and may actually thin it enough for what you're having to do. Now, if you're trying to do blending and things like that, you're gonna probably wanna like thin it down a bit, obviously, but for a normal base coating, you may not need to add water. Wet palettes are great, but one thing is, is that they're not great for travel. Now, if you empty out all the stuff and you know get out the water and get all that, and you put in some pieces of paper towel or, or, or dry sponge, and you put in some pieces of paper, uh, you know, the parchment paper, and you put that stuff into your backpack, it's all dry, and you take it with you, well, then it's great for travel. But you've got a wet palette you've been using for a day and a half now. Now is not the time to chuck that into a backpack and take it over to your friend's house. Taking a wet palette and twisting it in any situation like this is going to cause trouble on the inside because the paint's sitting on top of the the paper. It has already probably over time wicked up a bit of the paint, uh, the water up into the paint, which makes it even a bit more fluid. Kind of refers back to my last point. And when you start to tilt, it's not going to work out. Now, again, something like this. This is the Army Painter um, uh, wet palette, and it's great because it's got a little spot in there where you can keep your brushes and stuff like that. You could store extra papers and all kinds of things in there. You know, the, the paper that you use for the palette. And it's got the little strap even to keep it all kind of sealed and that's great. Um, you know, the kind of that I talk about in the previous video too, the little Tupperware box, those work good too. But understand that if you are going to travel with a wet palette, you can't just chuck it in the, you know, if you want to keep it completely flat to take it over to your friend's house and it's in the so, you know, it's resting in your car or whatever, that's fine. You might be okay, but don't just chuck it sideways. Just because it's got a strap, don't chuck it sideways full of paint into your backpack. One last thing. Um, I talked before about how I never had mold in my wet palette. Uh, I've also always used tap water in my wet palette. Now, I'm no scientist, but I do wonder maybe if the two aren't related. Um, Distilled water is what a lot of people say that they should that you should use when you're wet palette because distilled water is normal water that has been turned into steam and then it like kind of re you know turns back into water and in doing that the stuff that's in our normal tap water I don't know fluoride chemtrails whatever all that stuff is no longer in there kind of and that's the idea behind distilled water it does not have any of the extra minerals and things like that it should be just straight uh, water. I don't know if that's why I've never had mold. I mean, Lord knows sometimes we get moldy bread. You know, it happens uh, in our house. So it's not like we're in a mold-free zone. Uh, but think about using tap water, you know, in your, in your, if you're having a mold problem specifically, uh, first before you start chucking pennies and copper wires and all that stuff underneath your sponge, just think about using some tap water and seeing if that helps. Um, I don't know that there's a downside I've never seen one, a downside to using tap water over distilled water. So uh, I use distilled water in my airbrush because I'm concerned about um, mineral deposits getting on the inside of the airbrush. And that totally makes sense. But if I get mineral deposits on the inside of my wet palette, I can wipe them out very easily or just get a new wet palette. So I hope this answers some questions that people have asked me over the years about wet palette, especially after seeing the wet palette video. Again, pachow. Um, I can't stress enough how important I think a wet palette is to painting. It really, really helps for blending. Even if you're just starting out the first steps in blending and trying to get the hang of it, having nicely wet paint on a palette to be able to go back to repeatedly and switch between colors is a godsend. Having the ability to just have your colors not just constantly drying out on whatever you're using as a palette is super important. Being able to mix colors easily, also super important. Um, some people don't like to mix colors because then they can't go back easily and get that same color again. So they just have zillions and zillions and zillions of pots of paint and they just work straight out of the bottle, which is fine. They still thin their paints generally because it's important. But understand that a wet palette, if you've re relatively recently or within the last couple of years switched to a wet palette, let us also again know in the comments what you think. Um, 
I rarely ever talk to anybody who's like, yeah, I went with a wet palette and I don't like it. I don't think it's very good. Um, almost everybody I've always talked to has always been like, it has pay it changed my painting life and I know it's changed mine. So um, hopefully some of these uh, little extra tips can help uh, so you can keep painting and keep painting um, more wetly. That sounds weird. I don't think that was the right word.